Zach, when did you start writing screenplays? I started in uh, NYU Film School, um, so a while ago. <laughs> but um, it was actually, I wrote my first, it wasn't, I was writing short scripts in film school, and then um, my first script I wrote right after I graduated. And that was part of your thesis was to do these shorts? Or? No, um, so we were more, I, I wasn't in the dramatic writing program at NYU, we were um, in, the film production, TV production uh, major, so to speak, uh, we focused more on producing, directing. Um, we did obviously take a writing class or two, but um, that was more sort of geared towards short, um, short films that we would shoot ourselves or produce. Um, or at that time, video, you know, we had the TV production. Um, but for the most part, no, I didn't, I had always been curious about writing, but I really, and when I got to, once I got out of film school and through film school, I really developed um, uh, a um, affinity for writing and editing. And um, you was sort of the, the beginning of the process and the end of the process, but I always thought the most creative parts of the process of making films or making television. So, um, you know, again, it was mostly short stuff at, through film school, but then when I got out, I started thinking, all right, let me give that, this writing thing a go. And I wrote my first script. Um, so uh, I think I had started on it maybe during film school, but then once I was out, right when I had finished, uh, after graduation, I finished it. And after graduation, did you stay in New York City? For about a year. Uh, I, I worked some odd jobs and, um, you know, I had, uh, my family was there. And I had a, a girlfriend at the time who I was very serious with. And once um, I sort of realized that New York wasn't the place to be and that, you know, I, I had spoken to some um, friends of mine and, and uh, fellow um, Tish alum who were out on the West Coast, you know, it became clear that I needed to, to, move, to move out here uh, to L.A. And, and start my film career. Uh, this is where everyone and everything was at the time. Um, it's since changed a lot and evolved, um, but back then that's when it uh, became clear that you know New York really wasn't happening uh, on the grand scale that you know, or or to further my career at the time in the film and TV business. So I moved. And when you came here, uh, did you have any sort of not buyer's remorse, but did you did you have a couple sleepless nights where you said mm, maybe this isn't for me? You know, I don't remember. I think. Uh, you know, I have. I was very fortunate because both my parents were very supportive in my decision. Um, you know, they had both been advertising executives and both kind of always marched to their own beat. So they wanted, you know, they wanted me to sort of pursue my goals, career goals. <clears throat> and so moving here, um, I definitely felt that uh, I had their support. I've missed them very much. Um, but no, I don't think I ever had any sleepless nights. I, at times I thought, oh, maybe I will move back one day because I did miss New York. But after a while, I just became accustomed to LA and, and realized that I was more probably, while New York was always home, I always felt that, you know, um, my soul belonged here in California and Los Angeles. How many screenplays did you write before you wrote Take Back? Well, I wrote Take Back, mm, probably in the year 2012. So before that, I had written Probably about 10, I'd say anywhere from 8 to 10 off the top of my head. So, um, yeah, it was an um, interesting story. It was my manager at the time suggested I write something, um, a low-budget action film. And I, uh, believe it or not, um, was in church. Uh, I attended this church service once, and um, this woman was speaking about. Um, she was um, she ran this worldwide organization that helped women and helped them recover and you know build their lives back. And I just remember I had literally had the conversation with my my manager, like suggesting I write a low budget action film, and um, this you know sermon. You know, literally a week later, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And it kind of went from there. Um, but um, but yeah, it was it was a um, I, I would say uh, probably a good eight to ten scripts before I I wrote take back. 
And these were feature scripts? Yeah, they were feature. I had written some, uh, I had, no, I hadn't quite started doing pilots. I, I, had, I had written, I uh, subsequently wrote some pilots, um, but this was my first, um, uh, yeah, this was, um, yeah, everything else had been features at the, up until that point. Yeah. And so were you using a uh, screenwriting software when you started these eight to 10 scripts or were you doing it just sort of like in a Word document pages? No, I always, I always used Final Draft. Uh, I think back in film school and, or, and, and maybe my first uh, script, I used what was called, I think it was called Script Thing. It was an NYU professor of mine. <laughs> he had all, it was, Final Draft I think was still, was around at the time, I'm pretty sure, but he had us using script thing and, you know, um, you know, it was fine. It was just like Final Draft, but, you know, and I don't even know if it's still around. I'm assuming it's not, but after that I went to Final Draft. Um, but I always, um, I always uh, plot my story on Word doc. I always structure, plan everything um, on my Word doc on Word doc before I go into uh, the actual writing of the script, and that could take, you know, months before I feel comfortable with you know that that blueprint before I put it uh, before I go and start actually writing you know action and dialogue. Was Take Back your original script? Yes, <clears throat> Take Back was an original script. Um, and again, you know, just it was, um, I should say, inspired by this story. And I, I'll, I'll give you the, the story that I heard was there this this um, uh, this woman who ran this worldwide organization that helped girls. She had heard about this um, or had taken in this young woman who I think was about maybe 18 or 19 at the time. And she was dating this guy and she was dating this man for a few months and one night he took her to like this bar and um, she was subsequently uh, drugged and then, and this was in St. Louis, and she woke up in this just sort of very decrepit, you know, abandoned warehouse somewhere with other girls and was basically kept there for I think three to four years. Yeah, and it was this horrific story where she was kept there and as as miracle would have it, uh, one day her captor, you know, or one of her captors, I guess left the key near her, cause she was basically chained to a bed three or four years and Johns would come in and, you know, uh, do their thing. And she was um, chained to this bed and miraculously this key dropped, I guess one of the captors key to her cuffs dropped on the bed or near the bed she got it, freed herself, and escaped, and alerted the cops. And so that was really sort of after that was the the story that sort of drove me to you know write the script. Like if there was this woman who was taken, held, and then basically she wound up escaping and taking revenge on her, trying to live a normal life. Her past came back to haunt her um, in the form of the man who kidnapped her, who she thought was dead. And then, you know, she's got to basically now she has this family that she has to protect. So that was sort of the um, the bare bones for the story that I, I came up with. And, you know, again, subsequently went through a number of drafts till it got to uh, the shooting version.